So Apple have just released a new update to the iWork suite and there's some really, really nice touches in here specifically if you're into design and well, just all about making your life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take a look at these within Keynote, but just remember that these are working across all of the apps, Keynote pages and numbers as well. So let's jump into Keynote and take a look. So when you first update, you'll see your usual screen, what's new in Keynote. So we've got this um, object editing, um, being able to quickly add the different uh, values for things that you're doing, and the ability to select multiple objects, which I think is going to save people a lot of time. I know in doing support with people, that's usually something which gets a little bit fiddly. So really, really nice little touches, as well as some others that we're going to explore in this video. So let's get going and see what things look like. So uh, nothing's changed in terms of the UI, it all looks the same. So I'm gonna tap on plus, start a new presentation, choose a theme, um, and I'll just uh, stick with a uh, basic color. I'm not gonna to do too much to the presentation there, I'm just gonna show some of the features within this. Uh, so just as this loads up now, uh, let's just change some of the text on the screen and just give myself some space. It's just remove some of those other elements. Um, and we will look at how we can do that maybe a little bit easier from now on, but I didn't want to spoil the rest of the video. So let's just also jump in and, and chuck in a couple of shapes just to show some of the other features. So uh, we'll put a couple of animals on the screen. And you know what, let's change the color of these. Again, there's some shortcuts to doing that a little bit easier, but I'm just, uh, creating a deck just to work through this. So first thing to have a look at, um, the ability to just quickly edit certain things using the, the on-screen calculator. If I tap on the text here, for example, and tap on the paintbrush and go to text, where we used to just have the size numbers with the plus and the minus, we now can tap on the numbers, we get this on-screen keyboard, which means we can just type in here um, and that's just gonna change the, set, the text size for us really neatly, uh, really easily. If that's something that you uh, you know exactly what size text you want, you don't need to worry too much about keep tapping the plus to change anything. We can just tap on the numbers to just see what size we want things to look. Quick and simple, nice and easy. Now that also works for shape. So if I tap on the shape here, I can tap on the paintbrush again, and this time in a range, I have those same options here. So I can change the width and height. Again, I'm gonna have that on-screen keyboard. Uh, one thing to highlight here, if I constrain the properties and change the width, for example, uh, so let's just make this a little bit bigger, it's gonna instantly affect the height as well because I've got that constraint, so it's not gonna warp the shape. Obviously, you can change that if you want to um, and, and just change the height, etc. depending on the objects you're working in. You can also quickly change its position on the screen just by tapping on the arrows here. I've did a video before showing you how to do this with um, on-screen gestures, um, but this is, this is a very visual way for people to be able to learn how to do that. It's on their screen, um, equally changing in the, the, uh, the text on there to be able to do those things as well. Now something else which is really, really useful on here, um, and again, something which is just gonna speed up the process for, for people that might struggle maybe with the dexterity to do certain things, is the rotation of objects. Now this has always been something which is, uh, you, you can kind of do it or you can't do it and people struggle with it and get frustrated. Now you'll see that there's an option to rotate the object here. If I tap on this, there's a few different ways you can do it. This one's really neat because it just gives you these predefined kind of ways to rotate the object based on a specific angle. You also have the free move one, which is nice because you can just drag this bar around to get it to where you need it to go. So no more needing to tap with two fingers and rotate. I probably will still stick to that because I'm used to it, but if you're uh, just looking for a quick way to do something and not have to you know, worry about the dexterity, this is another way to do it. And what's great, I think, from Apple is multiple ways to do the same thing because it just fits individual ways of working. Um, you'll notice you also have the number one here. So again, if you want a precise um, angle of, of rotation with these, you can type this in as well, and that will instantly rotate it to that precise angle. So again, precise design, editing, really, really neat, really, really handy to do those things. Now let's have a look at a couple of the other options in here. Um, another thing which again comes down to dexterity and, and depending on how you're set up um, on your device is the 
ability to be able to select multiple objects. So now if I tap on the one object, I have select objects as an option. If I select this now, I can just tap to select other things that I want to group it with. I can equally swipe across the screen, so I don't need to just tap, I can swipe, which means if I'm selecting multiple objects, I can do it in one swipe of the hand. Once that's done, just tap select. So just go through that again. And those now have been selected together. I can just tap group, and now I have them as a group. So again, just nice and simple way of doing those things. You can still do it the old way, in terms of swiping down on the screen and selecting multiple objects. You can still do it by tapping one object, holding it, and tapping the other object. So again, all of those uh, options are still there, um, just a range of ways to do it. Now the other thing to focus on within the objects is the ability to change design from an alignment point of view. So I'm just gonna put this back nice and straight. And let's just say we've got our chicken here, or hen, slightly off kilter to it. Now if I select both of those objects and go to my paintbrush, again under a range, as well as all of the um, original combined shapes, we have align and distribute here, which is gonna help me just keep things aligned. So you'll see that there's lots of different options here that you can choose to move those shapes around, put them nicely aligned on the page. Now this is something that from a design point of view, it's important that you consider you know, where those um, objects are. You know, are they sat on the same plane? Are they um, anchored at the top? Because it just helps the viewer kind of make sense of the page. Because sometimes when things are just slightly out, and I'm not a design expert by any stretch of the imagination, but sometimes when things are slightly out, that's what the viewer is looking at. They're looking at, well, why is that box slightly higher than that box? Doesn't make sense to me. And that's a distraction. And again, from teacher resource creation, if you can just quickly align those things and make it look nice on the page, that's a great shortcut to just help you um, manage your, your projects and make sure that it's really easy to be viewable by anybody who's looking at them. Okay, a couple more things to just quickly go through here. These are just nice touches. Um, let's say we're gonna go in and animate some of these um, objects. So I'm gonna tap on, oops, come out of this. I'm gonna tap on the bunny, uh, tap on animate. And I'm just gonna add some just simple actions on here. So let's say the bunny's just gonna change scale um, and the hen is just gonna blink. And then I'm gonna tap up here on the three lines, you'll see that you now have little thumbnails for the things that you've selected. Now this can just make it really, really visual easy. Again, I do lots of animation um, with young learners um, and some of them might not be able to read yet, but they can definitely do some fantastic animation. And this can just help them if they're thinking about, well, you know, what's the order of, of the things that I'm, I'm animating. So being able to see them visually on the screen, really simple, really easy, um, just to help them organize things without needing to read on the screen. Again, this whole idea of just universal access um, and accessibility for learners from a design point of view. Okay, great. So last couple of things to just show you. This one probably a little bit more hidden than some of the other things, but again, equally useful. Uh, you'll know that at the moment we have the option to go from edit to, um, to just the viewer screen. You can change this setting. So if you know that every time you want to come in, you want this to be uh, editable, so you don't have to tap the edit at the top. I know I'm still kind of in that frame of I start editing and then realize I'm not actually in the edit mode. Um, if I tap on the three dots under settings, you'll see the editing down here. You can change to have this open in edit view. So this will change it for your presentations when they're first open. So turning that on means that when you open your presentations in the future, they will open in edit view. So there we go, there's just a, a quick overview of the new features that you can find within the iWork suite. Again, just to reiterate, I'm showing you this within Keynote, this exists across uh, numbers and pages as well. So if you're doing any design work in those things, you can utilize the same features. I know the idea of rotating grouping objects is something that people use across different uh, applications. So that's just gonna be um, one new way of doing it across your whole work stream. Thanks for watching. As ever, please leave some comments in the comment section below if you have any few, uh, other questions um, and have a good day.